Okay, so when we're starting this proportion unit, we're going to start a lesson with comparing rates. Okay, so store A is got, they have an eight kilogram container of cheese, $68, and then B has a 12 kilogram uh, for $88.20. So we're gonna figure out which one is cheaper. So would it make sense that eventually I would like to know how much dollars per one kilogram? Would that make sense in a store? If you think about it the other way, it seems silly. How many kilograms per dollar? We don't usually talk like that in the store. We'll say how much cost per one. Okay, so I'm gonna go $68 for eight kilograms will equal how much money per one kilogram? So that's what I'm trying to figure out. And this is the same as doing a sign law question, right? We're going to times and divide. Some of you might have just forgotten about the one, right? You don't really need to time something by one in math. So just 68 divided by eight is $8.50 per kilogram at that store. I feel like I always do this in the stores and then I realize a lot of them on their price tag has it at the bottom of their price tags, by the way. Okay, versus 88.20 to buy a 12 kilogram bag. So how much money is that one for one kilogram? So at store B, how much cost is it gonna be per one kilogram? So again, times and divide. Aiden, do you wanna just come grab some calculators? You can just grab two. So $7.35. Okay, so we need to answer the question, then store B will have the better, the better price. Okay, can you try question B on your own? Same thing, can you try question B on your own? Yeah, it used to be that, maybe one time. Okay, question two here. We have a distance and time graph. Over which interval is the ATV traveling the slowest, the fastest? Okay, so do you understand on a graph, if something is moving slow, it will be flat? ish and if you move fast then you're going to be steeper fast the steeper the faster because that means you're getting more distance in in a time okay um we're going to actually get these rates though Okay, so let's call this A, B, C, D, and E. If we could chunk those sections up. Okay, 
All right, this graph isn't going to be the super best to read here. How much distance can we say is this point at? What do you want to do? 10. Or do you, do you want to say, I think not quite 10 seconds, though. You want to do it at 9 seconds? Is that okay? 10 meters, and then we're going to say that they went 9 seconds of distance. So if we divide that, 1.11 meters per one second of time. Okay, what's the rate in section B? So we go from 10 to what's that distance? Should we say 15? So going from a 10 to a 15 means they've traveled five meters. So they've gone five meters over. So we said that we put that at nine seconds. What do you want to put this at? 18? So going from a 9 second to an 18 second is 9 seconds. Okay, section C. We went from, well we said this was 15. So we went from 15 all the way up to, should we say 30? Is that okay? Yeah. So for 15 to 30, that means we've gone up 15 meters. And then we said we started this at 18 seconds to, is that like right on top of the 20? Yeah. I think so. Okay, so. so then let's go with two seconds. Okay. okay, so that would be, 7.5 meters per second. And we're not going to do the same work for D. What's the speed? Zero, Zero meters per second for D. They went from 30 to 30. They haven't moved. Okay, E is going 30 to zero. So they traveled 30 meters. What do you want to do these times from, should we say from 30 to 32 seconds? Does that look maybe? Yeah. Is that okay? In two seconds? Like I said, this graph isn't necessarily the best. Okay, so on a test, I might just give you the chart and said, what's the fastest? So if I had just said that, what's the fastest, what's the slowest? So which is the steepest? Did it come out as E? Do you think E is the steepest? So that's the fastest because it's the steepest, and then we actually calculated it, because on the test I might say, what is the rate? Um, oh, I don't really like this question, because what's the slowest? Are we including the zero speed or not including the zero speed? Let's go exclude zero. So I probably would have to be more specific on a test question, just so you don't get confused. So if we're excluding, obviously, the zero speed, which line is the flattest looking line? B. B? Well, yes. 
technically you are moving the slow, slowest at D because you aren't moving, but. When does the ATV start to go back home? At 30 seconds, right? Where am I looking, right? Here, you're turning around and you're going home. And when does it get home? 32 seconds. What does a slope of zero mean? What's happening to the ATV? So in section D, what's going on in real life? The ATV is doing what? It's stopped. Yeah, it's just sitting still. So you're driving, then you're going slower, then you're speeding up, and then you stop, and then you gotta hurry you home, like really fast. It's like you home, yes, that's really fast. Okay, I'm not sure how much you have to flip here. Can you find a spot that says 7.2? And then Isaac. Isaac is training for a half marathon, which is 21.1 kilometers. He can run it in 2.25 hours. What is his speed per hour? Okay, so 21.1 kilometers in 2.25 hours. We want to know this per one hour. Okay, so I'm going to cross multiply that. Okay, so I did, I did a multiply by one, which I didn't actually physically do, but, and then divide. Okay, that's good. What if I asked you different things like how many meters per minute is this person moving? What if I did something like that to you? Okay. So, how many meters are there in a kilometer? Do you know that one? A thousand. A thousand meters per kilometer. Um, do you know how many minutes there are in an hour? Okay. So there's some stuff like that. I think I'm actually going to print, I'll print a conversion sheet. I think I have one for this unit. Um, okay. So I'm going to change this. So I'm going to times by a thousand, which means I'm moving that decimal three places. So now I'm replacing things with a conversion. So how many meters do we end up going per minute? Okay, so I might do some things like that to you where you have to kind of convert also. Okay, Mike needs to order snacks, and there's 170 people that he has to buy snacks for. He's going to order donuts. They come in boxes of 12. He's estimating on average each person should eat a one and a half donuts. And each person actually isn't physically eating one and a half, but there's someone that will eat two, and somebody, somebody will eat one. So he's just saying on average. 
Okay, so how many boxes should he buy? So if we have 170 people, how many donuts will I need when I'm saying one person equals one and a half donuts? Okay, you don't have to set this ratio up. I'm just doing it to help every time. It's kind of the process, but some of you might be just doing it mentally different. That's fine. Okay, so how many donuts for 170 per people? We're saying one. So we're timesing them. So if you had just straight understood when you read that, you're timesing those numbers. 255 donuts I'm going to need. Okay. How many boxes are we going to need? So 255 donuts equals how many boxes? When we know that 12 donuts is one box. So we're Dividing by 12. Okay, what would you do uh, if you were in charge here? What do you want to answer? Because you can't order a 0.25 box. Do you want to answer either 21 or 22? What makes more sense to you? 22. I'm probably going to say 22 boxes because as a business, it's obviously better to have leftovers than sh be short on something, right? Okay, Carla, is that the next question you have? Yeah. Carla's defrosting meat. It has a mass of 4.23 kilograms. She Googled and it said, 20 minutes to defrost three pounds of meat. So how long will it take for her? Okay, so we're gonna have to do a conversion. So 423 kilograms, I'm gonna have to figure out how many pounds it is. And yep, that's the symbol for pounds. That does not make sense to you, that's fine. It's, I think it's English, like a Latin term or something. Yeah, why is it LDS? I don't know. Okay, I wrote something for you here. One kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So I'm going to multiply. So do you see how I've started every single problem up with the same ratio? So I have over nine pounds of meat. Okay, here we go. Nine pounds will make how many minutes, or take how many minutes? When Google is saying three pounds will make, will take it up 20 minutes. Okay, so do you see how when I'm setting up those ratios, I'm lining up, I call it like t-shirts and pants. They always have to be the same. You can't mix and match minutes, pounds. You gotta keep everything lined up. So we're going to, do you see which ones I'm timesing and dividing? So I'm getting just over an hour to defrost this thing.